During the first 10 minutes, you know, I tried to explain you a bit about you know, why, why data is growing and how it has been grown and that it's going fast and that you actually need to do something with it. Yeah? So now what? So now what? You might know this, but we've gone through the same experience. I mean, if data, you know, if, 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 if data keeps on growing, I mean, you can invest in just larger systems, which is what we've been doing. Now we've been doing that until the moment that we, uh, you know, I mean, we you know, at that time we were still using solutions based on Oracle. Um, now you start looking at more expensive Oracle solutions. You start looking at solutions like Oracle Extra Data. Not sure if that rings a bell, but it's just a bloody expensive appliance, uh, which is, you know, a, a combination of hardware and software. And it's, I'm not sure if it was a million at that time, but those are the figures we were looking at. You know, just an awful lot of money, and there is a limit. At the end, I mean, there is a limit. I mean, there's there's always a lot. You know, there's not always a larger machine. Uh, meaning the vertical scalability reaches its limit. And besides that, you know, it's uh, you know, it just gets expensive at the end. The nice thing is, you know, it's pretty easy to scale. So if you think about big data, and if you can just scale up by buying a larger machine, and it's still relatively cheap, I mean, just do it, huh? So we uh, we moved, of course, like. Uh, like the theory says, we move to uh, buying many systems, you know, many smaller systems, and uh, I will explain you how we, uh, you know, what we did and actually how we uh, how we evolved. So horizontal scalability. Yeah, it, the if you look at the you know the line underneath, that's cool, sure. Eh? I mean, you it's not so easy to scale horizontally. I mean, you need to think about front up front while developing your software, while building your routines. You know, that's so it's not like hey. Maybe we've reached a limit. Oh, maybe we should double it. Well, we should, you know, add another computer. It does not work like that. You need to think about it up front. Some theory about distributed processing and distributed computing. Actually, what it is, distributed, that's what, sorry, sorry. What, what I just said, I mean, if you have to think of the front, it means that you need to think about ways to split how you process your data. You need to be able to, you need to be able to distribute it or to divide it amongst machines. Um, and you see a uh, very simple uh, you know, mathematical equation. Eh? Input, ti input times what you need to process is the total time it takes. If you have most processing units, you know, just divide the total time by the processing units. That's the idea, and it pretty much works like that. That's the nice part of it. I mean, if you thought about it and you've designed it like this, it pretty much works like that. Computing is basically the same, but on a computer. Yeah, this is what I need to show from, uh, from my, uh, my engineers. Hey, um, if you look at ball.com, this is, I think you recognize the website, eh? And the news, all those arrows, all those arrows. If you look at ball.com, pretty much, you know, not everything, but maybe 50, 60, 70 percent is somehow related to big data solutions. So either we use analytical data solutions to fill the site with relevant content for you as a customer, or we use what we call operational big data solutions to make sure that we serve data as fast as possible for our end users. Right? Think about, you know, that is actually what it says there, I mean if you have many users browsing for information, browsing the website, you know, we, you know, putting, you know, doing many requests, we need to you know, provide or we need to build technology that can support that. So there's a difference between the operational big data part and the analytical big data part. I'm going to show you about two examples of each. Yeah. If you look at the site, you know, I'll, I'll explain those examples in more detail. If you look at the sites, for instance, it's difficult to read, but it says also interesting. Yeah, the, the four books, which says also interesting, that's based on our recommendations or alg algorithm. If you look at the prices, or even the content itself, if you look at the product page, I mean, the prices are derived from a very fast, ser ser fast serving uh, operational big data solution, mainly based on MongoDB. So how did it all begin? Because this is now, but it was not like that five, six years ago. Five, six years ago, I mean, we did do some distributed processing, but we, you know, we did it by ourselves. You know, if you, you know, actually we had 
a customer, usually a marketing department, you know, the marketing department, not a, but the marketing department, and they wanted to know something, you know, and we just needed to find out a way to process the data. So it was a lot, so we wanted to split it. No, you know, so we did the, uh, you know, uh, the hash, the hashing. And you, you probably know the hashing I mean, back in Oracle. You know, you want to split it up to some extent, so actually you can do some parallel processing, more or less, and actually run it to multiple cores. So. If we would do that, it would take maybe 10 hours, maybe 12 hours to process the data and give the relevant information back to our marketing department. But it was a bit cumbersome. It was manual, you know, and uh, you needed, uh, yeah, you needed brains. I mean, we all need brains, but you need maybe a bit more brains to do it. Um, and then the good thing was that, you know, while doing this, we saw the solutions came across. MapReduce came across. At first, only a paper which was great because it is pretty much described what we had to do, but it was just a paper. So yes, yeah, we, mi we, might, yeah, we might know already, or at least it gave some more help, but you know, it did give us the, the insight on how we could do it. But thank God, you know, n not only paper came along, but also you know, Yahoo. I mean, they actually made it happen. So we liked that, because now we didn't only have the theory, but also the practical, you know, the practical solution available. So we tried Hadoop back in 2008 already. And we built our first cluster. This, this, is, this is a real image of our first cluster. So we took small desktops, and those are already old at that time, so they're not, you know, even then they're already old, so they're probably from 2004, um, you know, which we had left, and we put them under a desk, and we start experimenting. We start using Hadoop, we start cleaning, we start building our first re uh, recommendations algorithms. And then we you know, scaled it up a bit. We got some more brains in the room, and we did like, kind of hackathon type of thing. I mean, hackathon was called a hackathon at that time, um, but you can compare it to hackathon. Okay, let's see what we can do with that technology. And we processed three weeks of web data in 25 minutes. And the nice thing was, I mean, those were old machines. You know, one machine broke down, but it didn't matter. Eh? It's distributed. If a machine breaks down, I mean, it will be a bit slower, but the processing will keep on going. So great, we proved that it would work, and we actually built our first cluster. It looks much more fancy. It's actually in, it's not in the data center, it was in the data center room in the old office, but much better. And actually we used Cloudera at that time as a distribution. If you look where we are right now, I didn't have a picture because it's actually in the data center and I can't get in myself, you know, and uh, I couldn't find anyone with a picture of that specific slot. Could have shown you some other, but <laughs> didn't matter. Uh, actually we have about 26, Worker systems times two because we double everything, so about 52. Um, true, you know, available Hadoop storage in house. So we don't use any cloud solution. It's in house, and we moved actually to Hortonworks. So we moved from Cloudera to Hortonworks. If you look where we use it, this is a snapshot. So we started after first experiments, we started with search suggestions, which we will show you. Moved to search rank recommendations, uh, weather, etc. And I have the abbreviation of CCM with me, but I keep on forgetting. <laughs> it's about customer-centric, bloody blah modeling. <laughs> Doesn't matter. I want to show you about a couple of examples. So what have we done to help the customer to enter search details? I remember this was a couple of years ago when you entered the search. I mean, at one moment Google started to, you know, to add those, you know, those, those, call it those search suggestions. We didn't have it at that time. So we needed something because people are used to Google. We didn't want to be like Google, but if they are used to Google, it might help to have it as well. Now this is it. You, know, you fill in fifth E, and then it starts coming up with all those elements. Eh? When you type the first letter of a, of a word, it comes up with the most used uh, variants. So we want to do it automated, because we did have some search suggestions, but they were manually maintained, which is not very scalable. Um, and we actually wanted to, it to be based on historical search. Uh, uh, entries. Yep. And it didn't only have to be the search, or not only search is relevant, but also what came out of it. So this is the high-level architecture. Pretty simple. On the left you have, call it the big data part. On the right you have actually the search. Yeah? So yeah, the search at the end, you still want to find the products or the whatever you were, you were looking for. So if you look at the, yeah, if you look at yeah, the left or the right for you, um, on the right side, you see submit search. If you submit search, it will go to the web server and to actually go to our search engine, Endeka. 
If you look on the other side, fast surfing, which we call ball type ahead server, it starts looking at our yeah, Hadoop based uh, search engine solution. And every time someone has submitted a search, you can imagine that the search suggestion solution is updated with that search entry. So it was pretty simple at first. Yeah, just count the searches, just count it, and do some filtering based on quantities. So if more people have searched on Harry Potter than on Hadoop, then if you would type the age, then Hadoop, uh, Harry, sorry, Harry Potter would pop on the list, pop up on the list, on the higher on the list compared to Hadoop. Huh? It's a true example. Eh? And we used one week of data, and we used one system. So this MapReduce, you know MapReduce? Some of you? No, I'm not going to explain it, but basically it means that uh, it's the example I just gave. I mean, people have searched for Hadoop, and they've, you know, two people have, two persons have searched for Harry Potter. At the end, using the map and the reduce, you see that Hadoop, you know, is, or actually Harry Potter, will show up or has a higher ranking compared to Hadoop, because people have searched it twice. <coughs> we added some more logic, that if you would start looking for age, you could end up at Harry Potter or Hadoop. If you would start looking at HA, still the same, HAR, Harry Potter. Yep. And then based again on the number of times people have actually submitted a search for Harry Potter or Hadoop, you know, the, the what do you call it, the, uh, yeah, the relevance will change. Yep. Very simple. The downside of this solution is actually that people were looking for stuff that we didn't that we didn't sell, at least not at that time. So we were, you know, people were looking for 90 deckbed overtrack, and we saw it because we were looking at the search results. So we give them, and because people were you know, searching for it quite often, it would show up high on the ranking list. But we didn't sell it, which is a now we do actually, yeah, but it was a pity. So we, you know, we actually enhanced our search rec you know, our search suggestions. We actually used more data. We used buying history and available products in the mix. And that's a bit how we've experimented and improved our search suggestions. Yeah. And also what we did is if we look at recent data, it's probably more relevant than data from one year old. Makes sense as well. Eh? So the more recent, the more, the higher it will end up on the ranking. And we actually moved from one week to one year. And it actually works, because if you would look at the 12th of February in 2012, it's the day when Whitney Houston dies. And we have similar examples if, you know, when, uh, was last again? Was someone else? But anyhow, the day when Whitney Houston dies, you know, like, it was on a Sunday, and the morning morning, when we checked our systems, you actually saw that, if you look at it, typed in a W, Whitney Houston would pop up higher on the list. And she didn't sell a lot of CDs at that time. Eh? We didn't sell a lot of DVDs, you know, it's purely the fact that people were looking for it. And there are more examples, but again, after the break. <laughs>